Let's figure out why your house is so boring. Hello, my name is Celia. If you have been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome. On this channel, we talk about home decor, mom, plants a little bit of it all and today we are going to talk about why your home is boring i've got five tips that i think will help get you on the way to a more personalized and exciting vibrant space so let's get started okay look down are you sitting on a gray beige or black couch is the rug also gray beige or black are the pillows on said couch gray, beige, or black with maybe a little hint of metallic? You, my friend, are probably afraid of color and it is definitely holding your space back. Color can affect your mood, it can irritate, it can soothe, it can affect your blood pressure, actions, and reactions. But when it comes to your home, it's really worth taking the time to figure out what colors will put you in the best mood because it's your home. So where do you start? You can start with throw pillows. They're an excellent way to just add a little bit of color and you know, see how you react. Buy a small piece of fabric or hang a scrap piece of fabric on the wall to see how that affects your mood. You can get samples of paint and paint geometric shapes on the wall. That's actually really trendy right now. And it's a great way to just ease yourself into adding some color. You can graduate to accent walls. No one says you have to take a whole room in your house and paint it yellow. You know, maybe you just paint one wall a green or a blue but either way take some time to inject some color into your space and before you know it you'll be sitting on your chrysanthemum couch in no time so tip number one start experimenting with color now to help you on your way to color comfort i have the perfect app for you it's called redecor i discovered this app and have literally been playing it non-stop it's allowing me to flex my design and creative muscles while basically I spend all of my time feeding my new baby. There are different challenges posted in the app every day and you compete against other designers. So it's a great way to see how colors and textures match with each other and you get to vote on who wins each matchup. It's so addictive, I swear. As Sean has more than once been like, please put your phone down and stop picking wallpaper for a fake room and like focus on what's happening in our actual lives. The app is a great way to de-stress and a great way to practice flexing your own decor skills. You can see again how different colors and textures work in spaces to give you the confidence when tackling your own space. Now you can download this app for free. It's free to download, free to play, and you can find a link to download the app that's Redecor app in the description box below. Please join me, <laughs> download it, play it, come back to this video, leave me messages in the comments telling me how addicted you are because I need to not be the only one. Now, the internet would like you to believe that there are some hard and fast decor styles with hard and fast rules to follow. And now that is kind of true, but identifying your style can give you guidelines to follow when decorating your space. Maybe you are more drawn to Scandinavian vibes with clean lines and you know light and airy vibes, uh, light colored wood, maybe that's your vibe. Or maybe you are a mid-century modern kind of person with that like warm walnut wood and you know decorative inlays into the furniture and organic shapes you know maybe that's kind of where you are or a boho queen maybe you like a little bit of thrifted and vintage and more handmade items in your space a more eclectic look whatever it is identify it once you have that baseline then you can go in and find secondary and third things third styles that kind of accent what your first one is. So maybe you're a minimalist, but you really like the idea of handmade crocheted wall hangings that have a more boho vibe. Or maybe in your mid-century modern space, you want to add just a little bit of glitz and glamour of a more glam style. So identifying that first decor style 
is what will keep your space cohesive. For me, I'm a little bit of a mix between a boho and a mid-century modern. I love color, I love texture, so there's lots of that in my space, but when it comes to the furniture that I select, the furniture really has the vibe of mid-century modern. If you're interested in seeing more of my apartment, <laughs> you can check out my apartment tour that I will link here and I will link it down in the description box. So tip two, identify your main decor style. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a hashtag Target style decor find as much as the next girl. I mean, they somehow always know exactly what you need, am I right? But the thing about buying everything from a big box store is that your home can kind of start to look like a big box store. You guys know what I mean. Everything you'll look around and you're like, am I in the Target section? Like, am I in the home decor section of Target? Or am I in a home goods right now? Like everything just looks really not basic, but standard, you know? It doesn't have that pop. Adding elements to your home that tell a story are the ways that you make your space feel more like you. It looks more personal and tells a story of who you are. Now, that story doesn't always have to be, I went to Dubai and found this whatever. Maybe the story is, oh, I picked this up at my local whatever gift shop or my local tchotchke shop or my local thrift store. Or I picked this up from my favorite super cute YouTuber who has her own home decor shop always linked in the bio be sure to check it out and that's a good enough story it just isn't oh i got that from target oh i got that from home goods and then you'll find things that are a little bit more personal maybe someone doesn't have the exact same thing thrift stores museum shops um, side of the road sellers like i mentioned your neighborhood small businesses all of these are great ways to find things that are personal to you. Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, like there are tons of options out there to find things that make your space more you. Maybe you frame some of your old childhood artwork. Maybe you hang your child's current artwork, you know, frame it up nice and put it on the wall. Maybe you have a collection of stamps that you love and you Put those on display maybe you've collected rocks from different places that you visited maybe you've collected postcards or magnets or whatever those things are that you love put them on display in your home that way you begin to tell the story of you and really everyone deserves to live in an interesting and beautiful space so tip three shop somewhere other than a big box store Now, if you have watched any of my other home decor videos on this channel, you know that I love a gallery wall. I mean, look behind me. I love a gallery wall. I think bare walls are a sin to your home. They are just screaming for you to put something up there. Like I mentioned in another tip, frame your childhood artwork. Your child fancies themselves an artist, frame it up nice, hang it on the wall. Anything that you can figure out how to hang it on the wall can go on the wall. Baskets, fans, necklaces, tapestries, all things that maybe you don't think can go on the wall but make excellent additions to your space. Think of your wall as just another place to add texture and interest. So you picked up a postcard on your recent trip to Miami you know when you're picking up that postcard make sure it's one that you really like and then put it in a frame and put it on your wall i personally like to send myself postcards from whatever location i'm visiting i haven't yet framed any of them but it is a a great collector and b at some point i might want to put them on the wall we have a special edition stamp that we have framed and hung on the wall that is like a very interesting thing to add we also have artwork from friends on the wall, um, supporting artists that you find on the internet or Instagram. Uh, maybe your friends are artists. Like There are tons of ways to get things to hang on your walls that you don't have to go to Target or Home Goods and buy something um, you know, that's very basic. This is another moment where it's good to step away from the big box stores and really make this something personal. But don't leave your walls bare. After you've figured out what color you love and you've painted that wall, a nice chartreuse or <laughs> a nice aqua or black, 
once you have painted that wall fill it with things that are really special to you and that you find interesting and not just cheap and easy from Target because Target said this looked good. If you need help, we did a how to create a gallery wall video. Um, I will be sure to link that here and down in the description. Like I said, gallery wall queen, your girl loves a gallery wall. Pinterest is another great place, of course, to find inspiration for how to fill your walls. So tip number four, don't leave those walls bare. plants come on you knew that this was coming no space is alive until there is a plant in it and now I know what you're going to say so many of you out there are like I can't keep a plant alive it's too dark in my home honey I promise you that there is a plant for you the plant that is easiest to start with in my opinion not a cactus not a succulent despite what the internet tells you the easiest plant to start with is a monstera monsteras are wildly wildly adaptive they can be dry they can be wet in low-ish light they will still grow and they have a large impact in your space ficus uh, trees are another good place to start uh, like a rubber not a ficus a rubber tree rubber trees another very resilient plant pothos also super super resilient and zz plants zz plants although kind of like a cactus really needs a lot less water than you think it does don't get me started on plant care there's a video on easy starter plants uh, also on my channel i'll link it here and down in the description but there are plants for you and if you just happen to live in basement apartment or your space just gets basically no light and you've tried and tried and tried with all of the plants that everyone says are easy just go ahead and get a fake plant you just need that greenery in your space to add that final touch it's like you become an adult when you can take care of a plant it just adds that extra bit of life to your space so don't be afraid if you must to get a fake plant but really try your hand at keeping some of these plants that i've mentioned here and in that video try some of those in your space because you really can do it i know you can so tip number five get yourself some greenery so there's my list did i leave anything off do you have any more tips that could help someone else if so leave them down in the comments below also don't forget to check out the redecor app the link is down in the description join me in obsession and like i said it is a great way to try a great way to try out colors and textures before you try them in your own home as always thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in the next one